Okay, so with that said, I'm going to kick off our meeting while Dan can shuffle around and, and help and assist with the technology, which is why he's here this evening. Uh, we are working to reconfigure things so that in the future meetings that we have, we won't be tied to the microphones like this, that rather we'll have microphones um, configured in a different way. So for tonight, normally I would be standing and uh, moving around, but I am also tied to the microphones because we did promise our public that these meetings would be live streamed and transparent um, so that everyone has the opportunity to, be a, to see what decisions are being made, but also to give input. So with that said, I'm Heather Contreras. I am the superintendent of Pajaro Valley Unified School District. I want to extend a sincere and huge gratitude to every single person who is sitting here tonight. Um, I know we are asking a huge commitment with being here every Wednesday, aside from board meeting Wednesdays from now until December. Um, so I really, I'm so excited that there's so many people who want to be a part of this and I really appreciate that. Before I go any further, I would like to go around the room and do introductions so we all know who is here and also what group you're representing. So if you're from the community side, if you're a parent from elementary or high school, um, that you have an opportunity to, sh to share that. So I am going to send it over to Jenny M and then we'll just go around the room that way and then we'll get started with our meeting. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Jenny M and I am the CBO and I just wanna um, share my sincere gratitude for you all giving up your evenings to take part in this important work. Hey, buenas tardes. <coughs> Soy Nelly Vaquera. Soy la Presidente del Sindicato de Maestros. Uh, representamos los maestros, uh, las enfermeras, los psicólogos, um, mucha gente que trabaja aquí en nuestro distrito. Um, y soy maestra de elementario y también de secundaria. So, a, a, antes era maestra de estudiantes que venían recién de otro país a enseñarles a, a, el desarrollo, desarrollo de inglés. So, um, y mis dos hijos uh, graduaron de este, um, este, este distrito. Yes. Good evening, I'm Mike Floor. I'm here representing CWA, which is the Communication Workers of America. It's the union that represents the substitutes. And um, I've been an after school teacher, summer school teacher, all the different after school programs. I've been subbing for 20 years. I do LPAC testing. So I have done all of the positions that our union represents and I'm honored to be part of this committee. So thanks for having me. Good evening, my name is Margarita Ponce and I am uh, the Director of Fiscal Services and I'm glad to be here supporting and represent, yes, representing classified, yes, of course, thank you. Good evening, my name is Diana Martinez. I am representing CSEA classified. Uh, we are the clerical, the bus drivers, uh, cafeteria, uh, maintenance, grounds, um, health, uh, technology. <laughs> um, that's who we represent. Thank you. Great evening. My name is Yandi Cervantes and I am here representing middle schools. Okay. Good evening everybody. My name is Adriana Mata. I'm here as a community representative and um, I work for Pajar Valley Prevention and Student Assistance. Thank you for everybody for being here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Luz Otelo. I'm here representing uh, elementary. I have a TK at Bradley. Um, I'm also a graduate from PVUSD, and I've worked for PVUSD, and I also work for Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance. So glad to be here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie Monroe. I am the coordinator of Visual Performing Arts and Gifted and Talented Education, and I am representing the district administrators. Hi, good evening. My name is Karina Quiroz, and I am representing middle school, although I do have twins in elementary and also one high schooler. I am also part of um, 
product of PBUSD, and I am also an employee to PBUSD. Hello, I'm Ashley Yarrow Flowers. I'm representing my child, who is an Aptos High School student. So I'm representing high school, but I'm also a product of PVUSD. I am also a PVUSD employee. I am a community partner, and I am proud to be here serving our community. Hello, my name is Ana Maldonado. I'm here representing elementary schools. Okay, I'll start over. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Emily Halvig, um, I've been teaching in the district for 19 years. I'm currently teaching at Cesar Chavez Middle School. Good evening, my name's Nancy Souza, and I'm also representing high school. I have a son um, at Aptos High, and I'm also a PVUSD employee. I work at Aptos High School. Hi, good evening, my name is Jasmine Prado, and sorry, <laughs> and I have two children, one that attends uh, elementary and one at a middle school, but today, oh, well, I'll be representing uh, middle school parents. Hola, mi nombre es Maria Orozco, soy mamá de un niño de middle school, entonces vengo representando middle school. Hi, my name is Rosemary Castro. I am a parent representing high school, but I do have um, a child that's also attending Lily Hills Middle School. Good evening, my name is Katie Chris Kunis. I am a product as well of PVUSD. I also have kids who are in PVUSD schools and I'm here representing middle school administrators and it's an honor to be here with you all this evening. Uh, hello, my name is Marlon Olmos and I'm representing elementary schools. <laughs> Do I need to go back again? Okay. Um, soy empleada del, del distrito. Uh, trabajo en la escuela César Chávez Middle School junto con la maestra Haldi. Uh, buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Sergio Pérez Vázquez. Soy un padre de familia de la escuela Ansoldo. Good evening, I'm Susan Grolte. I'm um, the principal at New School Community Day School and I'm re representing high school administration. And uh, lastly, good evening everybody. My name's uh, Richie Gray. Um, I'm here, my daughter's just started TK at Tamar Vista. I have absolutely no experience of the American school system, so I'm here with my eyes wide open <laughs> and uh, hoping that I can um, contribute. Thank you. Okay, well thank you again for being here. I'm just gonna do a very brief overview of uh, tonight's meeting. We will have you out of here by eight o'clock. That's our promise to you for all of our meetings. We know it is um, late in the evening anyway, so we'll work to make sure we stay on time. Um, today we are gonna go over the purpose of the meeting. We are going to examine our collective commitments that we're gonna make as a sustainable budget team. And then we will um, look at what making kind of our problem statement that we'll be working on over the next several months together. Thank you. So I'm gonna direct you to the slide in the PowerPoint and I promise I am not gonna be the one talking all night. Um, Jenny's going to help me talk and then actually you are all going to do some work together because the uh, the idea behind this team is that we are working together and it's not a presentation this is actually going to be a working team and a work group um, so I have on the slide in front of me our mission and our vision oh yeah thanks <laughs> Um, our mission and our vision was just newly adopted by our school board of education. Uh, they did some work together with me over a course of 
two days to establish some direction for our district uh, that was updated and new. And so our mission is at Pajaro Valley Unified School District. Our vision is every student will graduate ready to share their unique skills and abilities and be a positive contributing member of their community and their world. And our mission is we're committed to cultivating a nurturing environment where every student thrives academically, socially, and emotionally, empowering them to flourish in a dynamic and evolving world. That mission and vision statement is really core for this team because we'll be making decisions over the course of several months um, that need to align to that vision because ultimately why we exist is to provide that mission and vision statement for our students. And so the decisions that we make need to be aligned with that. And so we'll start every single meeting with that to serve as a reminder of why we're here. So here are the names of all of you who are so amazing and have agreed to commit to this work. We put this here um, too for our members who are listening from home so that they see um, who is part of the team. We also put this here because we do hope that over the course of these meetings, if people have questions or concerns, that they know who they can reach out to and that we see this role that you're playing as a part of two-way communication. You are here not representing yourself as a person. You are here representing the community that you signed to represent. So if you signed on as an elementary parent, you're representing not you yourself, but elementary schools in our district and elementary school parents in our district. If you're here as a middle school administrator, you are here representing your colleagues in the middle school. And so we hope that this serves as two-way communication. And so we do want to have your names visible for people so they know who to reach out to. These are our district goals. And as we make decisions, we will want to make sure that our uh, decisions also align to the goals of the district. These goals are in our board policy. And in all transparency, we are actually actively working to update the goals. And so this slide will change once the new goals go to the board for board approval. But for now, these are the goals that we want to align to. And they are good, solid goals as they exist now. Um, we want to make sure that we engage and sustain the trust and involvement and responsibility of all parents. We want to make sure that we're attracting, hiring, developing, and retaining excellent professionals We want to, and staff. We want to provide academic challenges for all students. We want to maintain a balanced budget, which is why we're here, <laughs> and ensure that all schools provide safe, healthy, and positive school environments for students and staff. And we also want to provide a consistent and strategic program that helps achieve the goal of English acquisition. Uh, school districts are not just aligned to district goals, but they're also aligned to our LCAP plan. Our LCAP plan is our local control accountability plan. That plan outlines the goals, the strategies, and the actions that we want to engage in to support ultimate student outcomes. That plan is also the plan that helps to detail the way we will spend our funding allocations to help students. So this is an important plan. This was just recently updated and approved by the Board of Education. There are five goals and then two, three additional goals that are part of our equity multiplier funds. So our first goal is to ensure college and career readiness. Our second goal is to have a positive school culture, including family engagement. We want to support our foster youth. We want to support students who receive special services and students with disabilities. And we also aim to support our multilingual learners. So these are important um, goals that we need to keep in mind and we'll have this information available at every single meeting so that we, we stay aligned with our decision making. The equity multiplier goals are goals that we set for new school, community day school, for renaissance continuation school, and for our virtual academy. All right, so here is our agenda for today. 
Uh, we are taught we are going to spend a little bit of time talking about why now why are we forming this sustainable budget team now and what is the purpose of our team we're going to establish our team norms and how we're going to engage with each other as well, well as our local community and we're going to look at co-creating the problem statement that this team is going to attempt to solve and then we'll review the process and the timeline for the months ahead. So that's what we're gonna be doing over the next one hour and 43 minutes. All right, so what we currently know, and now we're gonna start to get into the meat of the presentation, is that since 2013, we have experienced declining enrollment. Our en enrollment has declined at a rate of 16% from 2013 until now. Santa Cruz County is projected to actually have an additional continued declining enrollment through the 2032 school year. So we're looking at the next nine years that will continue to have declining enrollment and that projection is set to be at 21%. So that's a significant amount. That means basically one in five students leaving the district. Um, and of course, our enrollment does greatly affect what services we're able to provide, um, and it uh, is directly correlated to the district's revenue. I think this is you. <laughs> Just a quick one: Is the twenty-one point four from now or retroactive to twenty thirteen? From now, an additional. Yeah, good question. So what this graph shows is it's a visual of that 16% um, decline in enrollment that we've been experiencing here at PVUSD. Um, we are not the only district in California experiencing this. Um, right now, statewide, um, almost every single district is seeing um, families um, leaving the area due to, I'm sure we're all experiencing cost of living increases. And also another big factor is the birth rates are falling. We're at um, all time low rates for um, birth. Um, and, and we're seeing that um, across the board. Um, we had Watsonville Hospital come speak at one of our board meetings um, last year talking about the impacts that they're seeing at their hospital at the local level. Um, so this, this trend is going to continue um, um, into uh, 32 uh, that we saw in the previous slide. So what that means is uh, because schools are funded based on what we call ADA, that stands for average daily attendance. So schools aren't funded based on enrollment. Schools are funded based on the average daily attendance, meaning we get funding for every day that a student comes to school and, and physically is in school. So I feel like, and I think a lot of school districts right now are struggling with this because not only is our attendance dropping, but a lot of our services, we can't, it doesn't make sense to fund it based on the days that a student is in school because we have to staff, let's say our classrooms, we have to staff our, um, our support services based on the total enrollment. But let's say our average daily attendance um, the last couple years because of the floods, because of COVID, it's been at historic lows as well. So typically in the past, um, PVUSD, our um, average daily attendance ratio to enrollment has been about 92, 93%, meaning students on average are in class 92 to 93% of the total school year. The last couple years, it's been at all time lows closer to 90% because of the impacts of um, COVID and then the floods as well. So what this shows is um, what our projected local control funding formula revenues are for, uh, for this uh, school year 24-25 as well as the next two years. So these numbers are based on our projected enrollment back in May and June for adopted budget. So these numbers are going to be updated at first interim in December with now that we know the actual count, now that we know the actual students who are in school. But we can start to see 
So our local control funding formula, we call this the bread and butter of how schools are funded. So this makes up the bulk of our, um, our general operating budget and our general fund. So these are the dollars that fund all of our uh, general education program and most of our centralized services. So our grant money is accounted for separately because usually grant money is tied to specific services. Um, so what we can start to see is as our enrollment starts to decline, meaning our average daily attendance is decreasing, the amount of money that we're getting is starting to see a huge impact um, going from last year to this year. It's about a projected $11 million decrease. Going from, from this year, 24-25, into the following year, 25-26, we're projecting close to a $5 million decrease. And then things look to start stabilizing a little bit in the out years, but from this year to 26, 27, I mean, that's so close to uh, over a, f a 15, 16 million dollar decrease that we're going to start seeing ongoing. So what does that mean for our district? I think that's a question that many districts across California are starting to grapple with. And one thing that I think we are very fortunate is we have a very, um, we have a reserve that is enabling us to, to do this work together, to make decisions mindfully, and um, to get the community input, um, and, and take our time making the right decision. So I feel very thankful that we're in the spot that we are in. All right, so the purpose of this team is to make a collective, or collective, more than one, recommendations to the Board of Education on how we use our resources to best serve students and maintain fiscal solvency in the face of declining enrollment over the next decade. We'll be presenting our recommendations to the Board of Education at the first meeting in January. So we're gonna come up with maybe one option maybe two, maybe three, we might have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C that, that this group will recommend to the board. Now the board can, can accept those or they can say, mm, we, there's more work to be done. Uh, but the idea is that our Board of Education is able to hear from the community directly what uh, we collectively think should be done um, to help with our, our sustainable budget. Any questions on that? clarify which board of education are you referring to? Are you talking about our trustees for our district, the county board, or the, the state board? The PBUSD board. Okay. board. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I mean, we can do outreach <laughs> ourselves if we're that good. Well, I, I think it's just, I mean, there's, <laughs> for some people that know, we have various boards yeah. of education. Yeah, good point of clarification. So yes. So yes, so that is an excellent point of clarification. This is to the PBUSD board of education, and our recommendations will be regarding our district, PBUSD. Okay, so on the screen now, what you see is the district's core values for allocating resources. These core values are values that are agreed to and um, followed at the cabinet level. So that's with myself and my cabinet, which includes Jenny M, Dan Weiser over there, Claudia Monjarez, Michael Berman, um, we have agreed that when we make decisions, and we make a lot of them, um, one, we try to be very collaborative in the decisions that we're making, but two, we use these guidelines to assure that the decisions we're making are student-centered um, and that they ensure equity and access, and there's another slide that I'll show you as well. And so I want you to read these. Um, because these are kind of the overarching way decisions are made in our district. So one, we, we always ask ourselves, is this the right thing for students? So that's our student-centered approach. Prioritizing students' best interests in all decision-making. The student needs to come first. Uh, we also consider the impact of funds that are sunsetting on student well-being and student learning, student outcomes, uh, parent engagement, what type of support the parents have for the different resources that we've allocated. 
So it always comes back to what's happening for students first. Yes, Sue. Um, could, could, you, could you just exp explain what sunsetting means for? Yeah, so sunsetting is there have been um, different programs that were brought on because of additional dollars we were receiving through ESSER funding. Um, those are, lots of people call them the COVID dollars. Uh, so as those dollars have started to recede, uh, we, we say sunsetting, they're sunsetting, they're, they're leaving us, they served their, their purpose probably those, and now we are not getting those allocations. Yeah, thank you for that. Number two, we always look at how can we ensure equity and access through our programming which means how are we ensuring program realignment and decisions that maintain equitable access to educational opportunities and supports for all students, ensuring the focus on student groups who have historically underperformed. And when we say historically underperformed, we're looking at students whose student achievement levels haven't been as high as others. And we do receive supplemental dollars to help and support those students. And we always want to consider that and make sure that we're putting those extra supports in place. And then we also, when we look at equity and access, consider the needs of all the students, prioritizing the needs of our vulnerable student populations. Our third and fourth um, value that we look at is to prioritize our co core educational goals. And so that means as we're making decisions, we want to always ensure that those decisions are aligned with the LCAP plan. I talked about the LCAP plan about 10 minutes ago, and that's that plan that we do with all of our shareholders um, about how we are going to allocate resources to ensure best student outcomes. So we always are looking to make sure is this aligned with all the community input and decision making that was um, made through the LCAP process. And then we look at considering our long-term educational investments. So what are the programs that might need additional years to show progress towards student outcomes? And what are the programs that are maybe starting to show um, that they are going to have evidence of impact uh, before we decide that, oh, we're, this one's going away. Sometimes we're seeing some promising programs and we always look at that. Is this a program that has long-term potential that just needs a little bit more time to grow? So that, that's the way at the cabinet level uh, we use this as a litmus test for our decision making. And that will be the umbrella that we'll come back to with this team as well. However, we do want to honor the thoughts and the feelings around this team and the commitments that we want to make collectively as a team uh, for how we're going to go about our business when we look at our, our budget as we move forward. So what we have up here are some different examples that are used both in this district and in other districts. Um, around collect what a collective commitment from a team might look like and what a norm might look like. So you can see uh, in one example, there's norms of trusting each other, showing vulnerability, engaging in crucial and supportive conversations. That's in that first box. Another example is be present, actively participate, trust each other. And then there's the blue box that has here is we represent the needs of the interests of a district for all district students. We honor process and remember it can be messy before it's clear. These are all examples of different groups who have formed their norms together. So our first activity of tonight is to engage in what are the norms that all of us want to see for this group and what is that gonna look like? And the only people who can really decide that is this group. So we're gonna do our first uh, group work together in just a couple minutes. So what we're going to do is, and, and this might, I think we may have to have microphones on, but it's probably going to sound a little bit messy for anyone live streaming, but we do want the conversations to be transparent. Um, we're going to break up into groups of four. Everyone is going to get a large poster paper, 
And in your group of four, you're going to do your very best thinking on what you would recommend for being norms or collective commitments for how we're going to go about our business on this team. We're passing out the uh, papers where you could record your work. And when we're done, what we're going to do is a gallery walk. So we'll go and look at each group's work. And then we're going to come to to consensus through a process that Jenny and I will lead um, to determine what will be this group's collective commitments. Okay, any questions on that or areas for clarification? I'll, I'll be breaking you up into groups if that's a question. I'll help you to know that. Okay, so everyone's kind of clear. We're gonna take 15 minutes for this activity. Uh, so you'll want to get right down to business of talking about what things you might think. And you all have phones, and so if you want to look up other norms as well or other examples, uh, definitely research is, is great. Okay, so we're going to count off, and then the first four will break up into a group of four, and then the next four, and the next four. And uh, Jenny and I and Andrea will be helping to facilitate whatever needs you might have or and you can are free to locate around the room uh, but maybe take a microphone with you so our uh, community can hear us okay so number one number two number three and number four so you guys will be a group and then Nelly starting with you to Diana you'll be a group of four and then Lande will start with you and go down to Stephanie. You'll be a group of four, okay? And then you all the way to, I can't read the name. Yes, there's a group of four. And then, yep, right down to the end with headphones will be a group of four. And then you're gonna be a group of three. Okay. Sorry, live streamers. We're being a little loud right now. Just give us a second. Put it up there. It should be sticky on one. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, yeah, so this is one, and then a bullet, and then acknowledging that. How am I going to do that? Yeah, how am I going to do that? Is that a good thing? Or should it be a whole other title? I think, it, I think a subset right there is okay. great. All right. Because you got a nice and bright <laughs> I'm trying to recall the uh, classroom. Well, I have one at Apple Post. The only thing is I have to make sure I spell everything right. Um, okay. I know the whole thing. It's odd. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like that. Be able to have a sense of humor. <laughs>
Okay, I'm going to call everyone to pause for a minute. You don't need to sit in your seats because you're going to stay moving. I'll wait till I have everyone's attention. Feels really weird to hold this whole thing up to talk. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is you should each have a marking pen or a pen. You're going to do a gallery walk. So you're gonna go from one poster to the next, to the next poster. We have a really engaged group over here still. <laughs> and you're going to mark just you as a person. You don't have to talk with your team about this. You don't have to, um, this part is not teamwork. This is you as a person. You are going to mark your top five. So you could read everyone's, you could go back later and mark it, but you're gonna put, you're gonna choose five commitments that you that resonated with you. So everyone gets five. So show me on your hands, how many do you get? Okay, no cheaties. We're not gonna do more than five. So we're gonna stick at five, but we're not gonna do less than five. This is how we're gonna create our commitments because the ones that end up with the most votes 
will be what our collective commitments are. If there's some that are duplicates and we say, oh, this kind of sounds like that one, we'll, we'll work that out. Um, but for the most part, it'll be the ones that get the most votes. We're gonna choose probably five to seven total to help us with our norms, okay? Okay, you're gonna have five minutes, so it's 646. We're gonna take until 651 for this. Okay, go. So do you know what? If you do that, I'll go around and say, okay, and see when take like the top ones take look on like poster, we can do like the top two because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Go to the next ones. If Andrea, you go to those and like kind of circle them.
Okay, we're going to ask everyone to return to their seats. And then what we've done is Andrea and Jenny and I went around each poster to see which were the top vote getters. Um, and we're going to call them out. And Jenny, in real time, is going to record them up on the screen so that then we can look. I think what we'll end up with is about 10, and then we'll narrow it down to around 7, okay? So here, the top two for this poster were equity of voice. Jenny, you have a... We're going to We're gonna really test Jenny's typing skills. <laughs> Uh, and then strive to achieve, okay, this is a big one, Jenny. Strive to achieve clarity, but accept ambiguity. Ooh, that's good. Did you get that? <gasps> nice, thank you. There we go. Okay, this poster... The top vote getter, I really like this one. I said I was going to use this at home. Listen to understand, don't listen to respond. Ooh, that's going to be hard for me. Okay, that's a great one, though. Um, and then the next was ask questions and that there is no dumb question. Okay, did you get those two, Jenny? Okay. Okay, this one is kind of a repeat from the last one, too, so it's good. Be brave and ask questions, and that there are no bad questions. And the next top vote getter was a safe space where people are comfortable sharing. Okay, the top two over here were honoring the diversity of our community and empower each member to use their voice. Ooh, good. Came up with some powerful norms here or commitments. Okay, this, this one only had one that everyone wrote on it looks like. Assume positive intent. And our last two from this poster are acknowledge that there are diverse points of view and give patience and space to unpack our thoughts without pressure. Okay, Jenny, did you get all those? Okay, if we could flash them up on the screen now. It's the next slide. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Okay, so we had another slide about how we'll come to consensus in this group. And because we're sharing our, what our norms were, I'm not going to go to that slide because I don't want to, well, I, maybe we can click into that slide now. Can you click to the FISTA 5 one real quick? Hold on, Jenny's got it. Okay. Okay, so we are going to use a tool that we'll be using uh, going forward, uh, and it's called Fist to Five. So basically, you're going to show each other on your fist uh, your level of agreement with something. And, that, and we're going to do that with our norms so that we could now whittle them down to five to seven norms. So a fist, no fingers up, is like hard no. Not having it, no way, don't agree with that. A one would be, that's a kind of terrible-ish idea. A two is I'm not thrilled. A three would be, eh, that seems okay. Um, a four would be I like it, that's great. And a five would be like that is the best idea I ever heard, let's do it, okay? So we're going to use fist to five to choose what our collective commitments will be. Are we ready? All right. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven norms, which that some of them look like duplicates. Yeah. 
question. I have a suggestion, please. Can we please add that students um, are our first and foremost thought Ooh. in our thought process yeah. and remove one of the um, duplicates, please? All right. Or we could just add the students one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great job. Okay, so we're going to go through them. And I know none of them are a terrible idea. We're not going to say terrible idea, but in this case, Yes, they are all great. <laughs> in this case, it would mean like, nah, that's not one that I think we really need to norm ourselves or to have a collective commitment to. Five is like, do not take that off. That is a really great one. We, we need that as one of our collective commitments to one another, okay? So, and, and remember, read through them because there are a couple that are duplicates, but you might like the wording of one better than the other. And so if that is the case on the duplicates, I would give one a zero and I would give one a five. All right, so here we go. Oh no, we lost our slide. <laughs> okay, so, and, and let's see, Andrea and Jenny, maybe you could help me to kind of read the room on where we think the majority lies. Go one more. Dan, can you go one more? I somehow we went back to Fistify. We want to go to the list now. Yeah, there you go. Okay, equity of voice. So Fistify, everyone's showing everyone their own thoughts. Looks like that's not there. Yes. Fours and fives all. Like that. Okay, strive to achieve clarity but accept ambiguity. Fist, show me your fist or your, your whatever, your vote. Yes. Well, keep in your mind that we want to do like five to seven. So I think probably vote on all of them, but the ones you don't think should make it on there, it would be a fist. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sue, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so strive to achieve clarity, but accept ambiguity. I am not seeing everyone's fists up. Everyone has to have a comment on here. Kind of all, that one's kind of mixed. Okay, mm -hmm. next one. Listen to understand don't listen to respond. Oh, that one's looking like it's on. <laughs> I like that one. I think everyone liked that one. Yep. Okay. Ask questions. And there are no dumb questions. Now, there's that one's a little bit of a duplicate. So you might like how it's framed a little bit differently or better. Okay, uh, next one, kind of similar, very similar. Be brave and ask questions. There are no bad questions. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Same, just worded different, yeah. Okay. A safe space where people are comfortable sharing. That one's on. <laughs> that made it. Okay. Honoring diversity of community. Ooh, that looks like one on there too. Mm -hmm. Empower each member to use their voice. Assume positive intent. We, we like all of them. <laughs> I know. They're so good. There's so much good thinking up there. Um, acknowledge that there are, di are diverse points of view. I think this one's very similar to honoring diversity of community. So you might want to think about that. Okay. I think people like the honoring diversity of community wording yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay 
Um, acknowledge that there are diverse points of view. That's the one we did. Okay. Give patience and space to unpack our thoughts without pressure. Yeah, it's kind of mixed. Okay, and last one. Students are our top priority in decision making. All right, it looks to me like our team norms are gonna be equity of voice, listen to understand, don't listen to respond, be brave and ask questions. There are no bad questions. A safe space where people are comfortable sharing, honoring diversity of community, empower each member to use their voice, assume positive intent, and students are our top priority in decision making. So that's eight. We ended up with eight. Fist to five. Are we okay with eight or do we want to whittle it down a little bit? Show me fist to five. Are we are we good with eight? Two are the same? Which two? Safe space. Okay, do we want to do a fist to five over safe space versus empowering each member? I'll combine it. Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, let's do a combination. Safe space where people are empowered to use their voice. Okay, so now it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Yes, sorry, I've got a question and I'm not trying to push back. The students are a top priority in decision making, I think, is absolutely, but that is that not already implied and covered within the district's core values? On uh, I was resources? thinking exactly that too. <laughs> um, as opposed to a norms of our engagement is what I'm reading here. We're all here and we will all we're here to put our students first. So I'm not I'm not I'm not sure if it needs to be a norm because we're all here to do that. It's just my thoughts. Thoughts? Okay, if you agree, raise your hand. I, I saw some non-committals there. <laughs> it, it, yeah, that's why we're here. Okay, so we're gonna look at it, is that's why we're here and that that was called out. You, do we wanna go up one gen or two slides to the core values? Because that was called out student-centered. Just to make sure that we know we are here for the students. Yes. So I agree with that, that the student it is kind of a given that the students are our top priority, but if we are talking about what maybe some of our personal goals might be, if we have negotiations going, we might get caught up in it, and it'd be nice to have that reminder okay. that we're not here for my agenda, we're here for the students. You could get lost when you get into something and get passionate about it, and you might need a reminder that mm. this is for the students. Yeah, so I, that's I, fair. I appreciate it being one of the, that's just my take. Okay, well two, I appreciate hearing two different schools of thought. After hearing that, do we want, let's take a new vote. Do we want to leave it on? Raise your hand. Okay, it looks like we're le leaving it on. Okay, well I think that this is a great um, set of collective thinking that we did, some good team norms. Diane. I'm sorry, can we add where it says bra be brave and ask questions? It says no bad question, it should be there are no bad questions. So that yeah. was just yeah. more clear. We'll, we'll um, so what, what Jenny and, and I and my team will do is we will make it all nice and beautiful <laughs> and we'll make sure it's all grammatically correct since we are uh, school related. <laughs> and then we will, basic, what we'll do is for all of our meetings going forward, we'll make posters so that they're here physically in front of us. 
um, so that if from time to time we need to go back to them, we'll be able to easily go back to them. So that, that will be um, our homework going forward. Um, and I think with that, we're done with that piece. So let's give ourselves all like a nice round of applause. That was great work. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, really nice job. Okay, so we are not done with the collective work we're gonna do and probably the next piece might be even harder. This was just a warm up into what we're gonna do next. <laughs> um, so what we'd like to do also to keep it very clear in that we all have a very clear understanding of what we want to accomplish with this team is we want to make our problem statement. And our problem statement becomes a, the statement of the thing that we're trying to solve. So we know that what we're trying to do is create a sustainable budget, but how we frame that and how we word that we and how we message that, we want to come from this group. And so I have an example here from another district that did this work local right here in Santa Cruz County. Um, their problem statement, just as an example to think about, was FICMAT, which that stands for C Fiscal Crisis, Crisis Management Team. Um, so they're just referring to an entity that had studied them and was offering some support. That's what that means. But it's projecting enrollment decline in Santa Cruz County schools, which will impact district revenue and may potentially impact our current instructional programming and school structures. How do we remain fiscally solvent and provide an excellent education for our students in light of this projection? So their problem statement became a question and that question was the thing they were gonna answer. So you could do it that way or we could do it just a statement. Um, we, st uh, can you go back, Jenny, to the very start of what our sustainable budget team mission was? When we started this a meeting, we did give you a purpose statement, but that isn't really like that, that problem statement. So what we'd like you to do now is very similar to what we just did, except I'm gonna make a couple differences. We're going to end up breaking back into your original groups of four and you're gonna work on crafting that statement um, in your group of four. But before we do that, because this is kind of a big project, um, I want everyone to take three minutes on your own, your independent thinking, no talking so that it really is reflective of what you think you're going to craft what you think the problem statement should be. So for three minutes, I just want you to craft your own. Doesn't have to be perfect. And time starts now.
And that is time. You don't have to be perfect. You can still keep thinking. This activity was mainly to just kind of get it started. What you're going to do now is we have more large post-its. Andrea will put them back and on top each of your posters that already exist. Andrea is going to put those posters on top. And what you're going to do in your previous group of four is you are going to together craft a problem statement. You'll have 15 minutes to craft the problem statement together in your group. And then we're going to do what we did with our norms. When we're all done, you're going to do a gallery walk. You're going to look at each other's. You're not going to do any marking at all this time. You'll just look at each other's. And then you'll get to have one choice for a favorite statement. Okay, so just kind of know that's where that's going. For right now, the only thing you need to worry about is getting to your group of four and crafting your problem statement in the next 15 minutes. So we'll reconvene at 7.30.
Okay, while our last two teams finish up, I'm going to share that we had some input to change the process from voting on one to actually looking at them collectively and then maybe picking and pulling best language so that it does truly reflect all of the thinking in this room. And I thought that was a great suggestion. And um, so we're going to follow that. So we're going to change our process a tiny bit. We are going to do a gallery walk. And you're going to go to each poster. I don't care what, don't do it yet. I'll give you the go sign when it's time. But you're going to go to each poster and you'll read it just to see kind of what you liked and, and what you didn't. I'm going to suggest that you take a little notebook with you and just maybe make some notes. Like, here's some of the words I really liked um, so that then we can craft a statement together. So you will have five minutes right now to go to any poster, but make sure you see all. Um, and at the end of five minutes, return to your seat. So time starts now. We'll return at 738.
Okay, about one more minute. Thirty seconds. Okay. There is some impressive thinking in this room. I read all the statements. I'm like, oh, I think I like every single one of them. I saw some note taking. And what we'd like to do in the next seven minutes from now until 745 is just open it up for a little bit of discussion. Like what were some things that we really liked uh, in each other's work? And what were some things that, uh, I, I saw this word and maybe that one's not one we would want to use. So um, practicing our using all and empowering all voices, we would like people to take that opportunity to just share their thinking a little bit. I'll, I'll start by saying one word I really liked that I saw out there was reimagine. I thought that was a really, um, a call out to the opportunity that could exist with this uh, in reimagining maybe some things that we've never even thought of before. I'm going to take, I'm going to be taking notes just to kind of um, capture what this discussion looks like too, and we'll later, later publish the notes. There were two things I wrote down. One was I, I liked ensure continued academic success and a supportive environment for all students. And I also like the words scale services and maximize resources. Well, uh, I think that uh, one of the notes that I, I took was the PBUSD, uh, Sustainable Budget, FEMA Knowledge, the Project of Decline Enrollment. I think it is important that we are very clear that's the, the, the yeah, the problem here. Uh, so I guess that's uh, an important point, I guess. thought someone on this side of the room had wanted to jump in. Yes. Um, so I like the one that says, and I don't recall which one it was, but it says, how do we maintain fiscal solvency while providing high quality? I'd also like to add equitably, just so that um, we're acknowledging that some of our sites might um, benefit from programs more than others and or resources more than others in order to um, address our vulnerable populations. I second that.
what came up for us a lot was the transparency through all of it, which I, I think I'm hearing echoed a lot um, between equity and transparency um, and uplifting the school community. Anyone else? Thoughts you want to share? Okay, looks like we've come to a standstill of talking. <laughs> um, okay, what I'd like you to do now is, and we're taking notes um, because what we, well, I'm going to take you to next step and then I'll tell you ultimately what we'll do, but to help Jenny and I to get a sense of what we're liking. Could each of you go stand by your favorite statement? This does not mean this is gonna end up being the statement. I just want to be able to record and get an idea of what people were really resonating with. So if you could get up and go stand by your favorite statement. Okay, thank you. This gives us some help. What we're going to do is I'm going to have Andrea put the posters in the order of um, who, how many people, who, what, what got the most standing next to it in that order. We took notes from what people liked and, and um, had concerns about. And what we're going to do is Jenny and I are going to craft two or three problem statements that reflect what seems to be resonating the most, but also from our notes. And then we'll bring back those two or three revised statements to this team. And then based on that, which should be kind of a conglomerate of all the thinking, um, then at our next meeting, we'll start the meeting by doing a fist to five on the three statements that we come up with that reflect all of this, okay? Does that sound like a good project? And Andrea, did you get what you needed? Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, we got it, okay. So Jenny and I are going to come back. You have the notes right here, so you see them, so it's transparent. We're not going to try to rework anything. We're just going to try to combine. All right, and if everyone will return to their seats, we have a couple more um, steps in our slideshow. And then we'll be adjourning for the evening. So congratulations to all of you. You just completed step one of the seven step problem solving model that we're gonna engage in for this team. So yeah, round of applause for all of you. <laughs> so what is outlined up here is a seven step problem solving model uh, that we are gonna use to engage in the work. So step one, is always define the problem statement, which we just did. Well, almost did. We'll, we'll come back with it at the next meeting for a vote. Next is to gather and analyze information and data and provi provide a shared context for all of the district's educational partners. So in the meetings to come, we'll be providing you with lots of data and information. We won't be providing you with direction or suggestions. We'll just be providing the data. And so our next meeting will actually be 
a two hour budget study session. It's the same study session that the PVUSD Board of Education engaged in about a month ago. Um, so you'll be receiving that same information. So that will be our step two. Um, there will probably be multiple step twos. We we're a big district and we have a lot of information that we want to share and we are very committed to being very transparent with our data and showing you everything. And you may have requests that you make of us that will be added on to what we already thought might be important. So there, there will be a two-way communication there. Step three will be to analyze and look for potential causes. We already know one cause of our budget is declining enrollment. There may be other things that we want to look at and examine. Then once we've identified um, those potential causes, we'll begin the steps of looking at possible solutions. Possible and then also plausible. Sometimes we have solutions that then we'll probably have to go back and see, like, is this really something we can do? Uh, and if the answer is no, then that might have been a possible solution, but not a plausible solution. Uh, step five will be to select and refine what our best consensus recommendations are that we'll be making to the PVUSD Board of Education. Um, what, when we come to that point, there will be things that we probably don't all agree on. Um, but we will have to come to a consensus with them. And then step six, and this will be on us, is to develop the communication plan of our next steps and then to develop the action plan and implementation. So we may make decisions here um, and we all agree to them and we give them to the board and then it's gonna be the district personnel who need to carry out those things. So we're just making the recommendations. Staff work is step six and seven. So we just engaged in step number one, it's pretty exciting. We all know the steps and we'll bring this back over and over again so we are identifying where we're at in our problem solving model. Any questions about that? Comments? Sorry, I'd like to make a comment. I just appreciate the clarity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then just this is kind of a reminder slide that as we do collect our ideas and our possible solutions and as we reimagine our possibilities, um, we will be looking at and needing to assess and analyze the feasibility of each possible effort um, and factoring in impact and instructional programming. We'll have to look at the legality of what we want to propose, the complexity of it, and also the implications that it could have for our collective bargaining agreements. Um, so when we look at those things, we also want to look at, you know, what's the value for the amount of effort? We could come up with some really great ideas, but it might be something that's just, uh, we're not going to be able to do it because it's too much effort on the system or something like that. So those will be things that we have to consider as well. Um, and we'll be assess assisting you throughout this process with, as I already said, data, metrics, um, an analysis, any requests that you might have to say, you know what, I'm not sure about this, I want more information here, I can't make an informed decision or recommendation without that, and so we'll be assisting you with that. Questions on that one? Okay, so here's a little bit of a timeline of how we'll be working in the months to come. Uh, through September and October, we'll be reviewing our instructional programs, our budgets, and professional guidance documents. And along the way, we'll have times to brainstorm different ideas and we'll be capturing those. In November, we'll start to narrow down to what are some of our high potential ideas. So as we go through this process and someone has an idea, even if you think, well, I don't know, that idea might be a little bit too crazy. We still wanna hear those because from that idea may stem something a little bit different. It, it might lead to like what we call a synergy, like kind of thinking that's built upon thinking that's built upon thinking. So we really don't want to, when we're in the brainstorming phase, not bring up certain ideas. November will be when we really narrow it down, like okay, these couple things has some really high potential and there's some data behind them that really justifies what we're thinking 
and they also seem to be feasible. And that's when we'll be able to look at this might be something that's a recommendation. And then in December, we'll be finalizing what those recommendations are, um, knowing that in January, we'll be presenting those recommendations to the Board of Education. Questions on that process or concerns with that? Mike. It looks like the seven. Can you put your microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it appears that the seven steps, the seven goals are going to align with roughly seven meetings. So each meeting we're going to try to accomplish a step. We would hope, but I, I think that probably won't happen quite like that. But, that's but that, yeah. Kay. I mean, yeah. Okay, so aligned with what Mr. Floor just uh, asked, our sessions will, our next one, our, our this one was 918, set team guiding principles, norms, and problem statements. On 10-2, we'll be looking at the presentation on the budget from an outside consultant. And then our upcoming topics that we'll be breaking out into the different meetings will be equity impacts, our contracts and partnerships with outside agencies, staffing ratios, so how we staff um, at sites and across the district in, in different programming. We'll look at our district programming. We'll look at how we attract and retain students, how we attract and retain staff, and then we'll look at the organization of our schools, which would include like the health of our buildings, the capacity of our buildings, what our current enrollment is. So that's, that's our rough draft. Um, just like Mike said, this is, will be flexible. We may find ourselves at a point where we're like, wow, we need some more meetings. Um, or we may find all the solutions next week and we're done and can go home. <laughs> no? Ah. <Aww. laughs> that's wishful, lofty thinking. Nelly. So for the upcoming topic um, for organization of schools, can you come with information on if you mentioned um, uh, enrollment at, at the sites. So it'd be great to see the um, enrollment at each of our school sites. And I would also like to see the enrollment for the previous two years. So a historical Absolutely, we can do so that. that. We can see yep. what the declining or increasing enrollment Where is, it is and at what it the looks sites. Like. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Thank you. With that, would we also be able to get data on like transfers in and out of the district as well as from mm -hmm. site to site? Yep, absolutely. So what I'm going to do now, because I'm looking at time and I, and I appreciate these requests, what we're going to do before you leave is I'd like everyone to, there's, there will be a little, where you signed in, a sheet. I'd like you to put your name and then your preferred email for communication. And what we're going to do is set up a group email so that these types of requests can be made. Uh, like, cause you might wake up tomorrow morning and be like, you know what? I really want to see this. I'm really going to need that. You can start making those requests within the email group. I'll be on it. Jenny will be on it. You can reply all or not reply all, however you want to do it. Um, we want to make these requests public and that uh, we're all aware of them and that as they come in, you're thinking about that and start that chain of communication between all of us um, in the interim. So make sure you leave that. We are also going to be sending out a survey to all of you tomorrow once we have Maybe it might it might take till Friday. We have to make sure we get the emails all set up and everything. Um, the survey is going to be about what went well tonight and what things d did you feel didn't go well. That way we can continue to refine our process so that it meets everyone's needs. Um, so you can be looking for that. And then, of course, we'll have our next meeting, October 2nd, 6 o'clock, exact same location. Are there any questions? So we've got a couple requests for data. We'll note that. Sorry, no, you could okay. turn. Uh, I have a loud voice. <laughs> I want to say, all of you teachers, administrators, parents, thank you for being here. And thanks to all of you, Pajaro is back. And as a librarian, let me tell you, Pajaro got a new collection that is going to be delivered this month. 
new books, new furniture. I think what the librarian of Pajaro said, the only thing that they didn't change were the windows. But everything <laughs> else is uh, going to be there. And we are going to be having our first, first meeting as a librarian in Pajaro, just sitting, looking at the people from Paulette, delivering all the books, putting on shelves, and by genre. <laughs> so we have regular libraries do a decimal system. We have Cesar Chavez, AR system, and <laughs> Pajaro is going to be genre. So thank you to all of you, because all of you work hard to bring back Pajaro. As a parent, thank you. That is a super happy note to end on. So uh, I will iterate the thank you. Thank you all for being here, for being great participants. I think we did some really great thinking and I'm looking forward to the continued work with this group. All right, thanks. Two minutes early, woo. <laughs>